Perfect. I believe we are live. So let's get started. 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock central, 12, uh, 12 Eastern. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. I see more and more people joining, but um, we have we have an absolutely amazing event, an event that I wish when I started Invest back in 2006, I've had access to. And throughout the years, I'm not going to do a lot of talking, so I'm going to just talk for two three minutes and then I'm going to turn it over to Robert because a lot more interesting things to say than I, than I do. But when we started the company back in 2006, it was me and my partner, wife, I add. Um, and it's funny, by the way, it took me five years to recognize that I run an agency. Uh, I've always said, hey, we're a consulting business. Well, it turns out that I'm a digital agency. So this tells you how aware I was of, of the market. Um, We've grown the team. Um, we are about 30 people at this point. The company went through ups and downs. And I think I've learned through a series of making many mistakes. None of them killed us, thank God. Uh, we've managed to survive um, throughout. And now we have clients all over the world, a team that's spread all over the world. But I thought to myself, you know what? It will be really amazing if I gather those amazing minds in the industry and have them share some of the tips that they've shared with me over the years. So the first session is going to be with, with Robert Craven. We've met two or three years ago. I mean, COVID just confuses the timeline completely. Um, but I was talking to a friend and I was telling him, hey, I have some questions about growing the digital agency. How do, I, how do you recruit people? How do you run a, a good program? And he said, you got to talk to Robert. And I'm like, well, who's Robert? And he made an introduction. So Robert runs a mastermind group in the UK, Grow, while he runs also the GIDA uh, initiative, Grow Your Digital Agency uh, initiative. Absolutely amazing. I've been part of it now for a year. Um, now, I'm based in the US, they're based in the UK, but I'll tell you how amazing it is. Their sessions are 8 a.m. in the UK, which means every couple of months, I have to get up at 2 a.m. to attend those sessions. And those sessions run for about five hours. Um, it is tough, but I look forward to it. Um, and I think a couple of sessions ago, I was, I was telling the group that I'm meeting with this other digital agency uh, owners, and, and Robert really does an amazing job facilitating the discussion. I was telling them every time I brought a problem, somebody has a suggestion. Uh, sometimes, many times, they give me a completely different angle that I haven't thought about. And, and every single time, two, three months later, I'm like, oh, I, I've solved this issue. Now I've moved on to a different issue. And I, every time I bring it up, there's just lots, lots of insight. Um, Robert, really, like, you know, and I'm not saying it just because you're, you're a guest, you guys have really helped influence and, and help us grow in the last 12 months. It's just been absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm not going to say more than that. I'm going to just turn it over to you because I don't want to take too much of, uh, of the time that's allotted to you because I know you have you have a lot. And I, I'd love for you also to talk to people at some point about the GIDA initiative because it's, it's just absolutely amazing. I think it's just if somebody can actually commit the time, you will get a ton of value out of it. But the floor is yours, my friend. Okay, right. So Robert Craven's the name. Uh, you can hear me. Put your thumbs up if you can hear me. Let's make sure I can see you can hear me. Fantastic. Great. Okay. So we have 45 minutes. The timer is on. Now, I want to talk uh, to the question, which is, what do high performers do differently? I'm going to crash through a, a slide deck. I'm not a fan of slide decks, but I think if we're doing this stuff online, and I think it's much easier for you to have that sort of almost to be able to read as I speak, so on and so forth. So I'll share the deck. I can share the deck with you afterwards, of course, just contact me. Uh, but here's the deck uh, that you can see. And I think we should just get going. Why do high what is it that the high performers do differently let's try and nail this one for you so uh first thing is an agenda for today um i'm going to ask you what's holding you back from running the agency you really want to run and more importantly what's the 2022 january 2022 context because that's exactly where we are now i'm also going to ask you why is it so hard what is it that makes it so hard to run an agency to grow an agency there's a bunch of standard questions you're going to come back at me with. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you about what is it that the, the really successful do, the really high performers do. I'm going to give you the full toolkit, but it's going to be quick and fast. So it's almost like 
take a recording and then go through it much more slowly afterwards. You'll discover the different bits of the jigsaw puzzle each time you go. And then I will answer those standard questions. And I'm going to say, okay, so what are you going to do right now? The purpose the, 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 uh, of this talk is, is really simple. So I'm on the board of a couple of agencies. I've got to get it right. I've got to understand what's going on so that we can make the tough decisions. And for you, I think you really need to understand what's going on in the outside world, what's going on for other agencies. People like myself were in this unique position working with 150, 170 agencies. So we actually get a sense of the full picture and most agencies are just coming, just getting one little angle, one little piece. So that's that's what I want to share with you, okay? So uh, a, a quick explanation of where I am and, and, and what's been going on. Five, six years ago, I, I was involved in a big piece of research which asked a fundamental question, which is what is it that high performing agencies do differently from the rest, which is the same as a big piece of research I did when I was running a uh, consultancy at Warwick Business School, which is probably UK's leading business school, which talked about not what's going on in the rump, what, we're not really interested in what's going on in the rump of the bell curve, we're not really interested in the top quarter of a percent at the far right of the bell curve. We're interested in what the top 10 percent, top, you know, the nine and a half after that first, day, what they do differently from the rest. And it's really easy to identify those people because they earn more, they charge more, they have bigger clients, they have better people. It's really easy to identify them. They stand out, they're known, they're recognized. But what is it that they do differently? It's one thing identifying who they are, but it's another thing identifying what they do differently. Well, they're very, very systematic. They're very, very process driven. They focus a lot on the systems and processes. They have a process, which I'm gonna show you later on, which nearly all of them follow plus or minus 5%. And more importantly, the, the one key thing that makes them stand out is that they actually, have handholders. They are. They have a coach, a consultant, which Khalid referred to earlier on. They don't do it alone. It's like this thing about if it, you know, the, that quote that uh, it takes a you know a village to grow to grow a child. Well, actually, it grows a village to grow to grow a business. So if you want to go from being in the rump to being in that top that top ten percent, you need someone to handhold. And, and what we discovered looking at those high performers was they all had a formula, which I can show you. And they all had that handholding, the consultant, the coach, the independent objective person. Right, let's get on with it. So first, what's holding you back? What is holding you back? If I ask you what's holding you back, just have a little think about what's holding you back. I'll tell you what you're going to be thinking about. You're going to be saying all this stuff. It's COVID. It's the COVID regulations. Joe, Boris, Putin, Koss, clients going bust. We're the same as the rest, cheap out. There's a, what's going, oh my God, there are so many things that are holding you back from running the agency you want to run. Now we looked at, you know, 275 agencies who uh, were those in the rump and we looked at 275 high performers. And what we discovered, you know, when you when you ask that question, what's holding you back? You know, it's, it's, it's fear. The ones who don't make that move, it's fear. It's fear of charging the right price. It's fear of, of recruiting the right or the wrong person it's fear of putting prices up it's fear of, of uh, do we have enough products and services it's fear about knowing what's going on next it's not knowing whether you you've you, you, what your job you should be doing as a leader of the business and that fear the, the the real issue isn't about that fear the real issue and when you ask the high performers what made them different they say what made us different what us separated us as a high performers was we recognize the problem's me. It's my mindset, it's my issue, it's a problem. So the people who are trying to grow, they think it's all about the outside world. The people who do grow, who are really successful, recognize that it's about their mindset and their discipline. Now, when we look at the context of 2022, things start getting really, really interesting. So, so one, what's holding you back? It's you and your mindset. Now let's look at the context of 2022, okay? These are the four things which are going on right now, January 2022. Okay, with that. Issues around bill billables and profitability, issues around people, recruitment, retention, issues around remote working, and issues around mergers and acquisitions. That is what everyone is talking about right now. So let me just give you some, some broad benchmarks of what we're seeing right the way across the world. We, we work with agencies across Europe, across 
across America, Australia, the, the, the whole thing. Typically a good agency, and it doesn't very much, very, very much, roughly 120 to $180,000 per full-time employee. That translates in billables to about $195,000, $200,000 per fee earner. That's a, these are good, not the very best, but these are good performing agencies that we're seeing. Hourly fees coming in the range of $120 to $200, utilization around about or at least 60 percent and a team split of 70 30 where 70 percent of fear now you'll notice these asterisks these asterisks are for a very obvious reason which is very few people can tell me the truth about what's really going on very few agencies really know what these numbers are they they kind of think they do they've got an estimate of what they are they haven't nailed it but those benchmarks if you're not hitting those or similar numbers you're going to be struggling in your agency Secondly, it's all about growth. What was a 10 person agency pre COVID is probably near enough 30. What was 30 is near enough 60. The high performers have really been accelerating, okay? And they've been accelerating, especially in PPC and digital PR. What was a good profit pre pandemic or an EBITDA would be 20, 25%. You'd be pretty chuffed with that. And I'd be saying 10% is the new break even. Now, I think that a good, good profit in those high performers is in the 27 to 40%. And I'm saying now the new break even is more like 15%. I mean, that seems like mad, but there are a lot of people doing this number. So just bear in mind, there are a lot of people who are in that rump who aren't delivering this, but there are some that are. And I'm just trying to explain what we're seeing with the agents we work with. When we come to recruitment, it's a nightmare, okay? The battle is on, not only have we got um, the, the great situation of everyone leaving their businesses, we've got wage inflation, a talent drain, everything's now global, you're competing you know, for people all the way around the world, and more importantly, the people from anywhere can work for you, and there's global wage inflation. What we're seeing in web design is that's the, the place that things are really suffering. And with the rise of platforms, decreasing value recognized from the clients, wage inflation, increased competition, web design and build is not, is not the place you want to be for a lot of agencies. It's really, really getting very commoditized. And so the new normal, we're struggling to understand now what a new normal is for, for where people work and how they work. And it seems that most people, roughly 50% have gone for this hybrid light. You can do remote and flexible, flexibly coming into the work. And there are different formats that people are struggling to make sense. So the point is really, it, it, it is, it is simple. So when we come to M&A, this is where it starts getting interesting. It is bonkers busy in the States, in Europe and the UK. There are more buyers than ever before. They've got government money. They bought a Tesla with the government money for COVID. Then they put a shed in the back garden. They've got cash left over and they're, they're buying anything that moves. And there are more sellers than ever because there's loads of agencies out there who realize that it's just too much like hard work. As a consequence of that, when we used to see maybe three to seven times as a multiplier, we're now seeing seven to nine, 10, 11. The valuations are bonkers. And on top of that, there's lots of capital coming into the market. The M&A market is just ferocious. So what does that mean for you? Well, what it means for you is if you're looking to, to go forward, you need to be thinking about where you can go. Firstly, the big thing everyone's talking about is the rise of AI and NL, okay? So that's interesting. So that means that every website I look at now talks about data and analytics. Unfortunately, saying, oh, we specialize on data and analytics. What makes us unique is our data. And data and analytics is the new normal. Everyone's doing it. It has become commoditized again. To say you're a data-driven agency is a big yawn. Every agency says they're a data-driven agency. But you need to be there to be in it. And then when we talk about consulting, in other words, let's talk about how we are how, becoming more of a consulting, marketing consulting business. Let's talk about how we can go up the food chain. Everyone says they want to do it, but I see very, very few people actually starting to consult. Most people are sticking to their agency background. Right. So that's, that's kind of the summary of where we are now. Billables and profitability are a nightmare. Can we do better? Will the market pay the higher prices? 
Recruitment and retention is another nightmare, and that's not getting easier. Remote working is a nightmare. Have we got it right? How do we maintain the culture? And then m and is ballistic. That is front of mind for everyone. So now I want to talk about why is it so hard to grow an agency? Here's the question. We shouldn't be talking about this, and yet we still are. And let me explain what I mean. If you take a two by two on, do you know the rules you need to follow to grow an agency? Yes and no. And, do, and is an agency a complex thing to grow or, or, or a simple thing to grow? This is where we end up. We know what to do to grow the business. Just go to Google how to put up prices, how to run a PPC campaign, how to design a website, how to use Squarespace. That, that, you know what to do. You want to be a good leader. You need a good, you need a good culture. You know all that stuff. And it's not complicated. It's not a nuclear power station that you're trying to build. It's a number of repeatable activities. So it's this bottom left-hand corner. It's not a nuclear power station you're trying to run. So you know what you need to do. You know why you need to do it. You actually know how to do it, but for some reason you're not doing it. And my question is, why not? And I think the real challenge here, the real issue for me, is that you're working with your reptile brain. The reptile brain is nervous. It doesn't want big change. It wants everything to be safe. That's what it's concentrating on, okay? And as a result, we aren't necessarily making the tough decisions that we know the agency really needs. Just because we know what we need to do doesn't mean we, we understand what we need to do. And I think it's that lack of, lack of understanding and that lack of commitment and involvement. Right, so what are the questions that agencies keep asking us? Let me just go through what these questions are. We'll get a sense of what's going on. Then we'll get to the, the meat of the, of the presentation. So a whole, bu whole bunch of questions starting with the word we. Why can't we get more better people? Why aren't we more profitable? Why can't we get more better customers? Should we merge? Should we buy? Should we sell? And top question starting with the word I. Why am I working harder than I've ever worked before? Should I be handing over control? How do I get back my mojo? What's the secret sauce I'm missing? Okay, we'll come back to these questions. I want to show you now the actual, what I call the full toolkit. This is what the high performing agencies are doing. Okay, this is under no illusions. The agencies that are really the high performers, the ones you look up to, the ones who've made it to 50, 100, 150 staff. I'm going to show you what they do. And it's kind of not rocket science, but the point is they, they are full on in terms of executing this process. So at the simplest, it's, where are we now? In other words, how good is your agency? Where do you want to be? Where are you going? So where are we now? Where are we going? We then use, or they then use, a, a, a device, a technique called the wallpaper exercise, which I will show you. And then they create a dashboard to measure. The dashboard measures the performance they put down in the wallpaper. And the wallpaper, is, which is their journey, their customer or their journey, their wallpaper maps where they're trying to get to from where they are now. It's really, really simple process. In fact, we have it contained on a single piece of shit, piece of paper, one big A1 piece of paper, but let's just move on. So one, the question is how good is your business? How good is, I come to your agency and I say, how, how good is your agency really? How good is it? And let me just give you the reveal on this. How do you know how good your agency is? We're looking at four things. One, Financial performance, not the pretty vanity stuff, but profit, turnover, cash. Secondly, we're looking at, okay, that's the stuff we look at. And the interesting thing about finance is whenever you say to someone, how good is your business? All they ever talk about is finance. That's the first thing they talk about. Why do they always talk about finance? Because the accountants and the management consultants and the business schools go on and on. The venture capitalists, the equity part, that's all they talk about. All they talk about is finance. And, and people think, therefore, that finance is what they need to talk to. But they're missing a trick. So it's kind of like a juggle, you know, 
finance, marketing, operation. It's kind of like a job. They're missing, they're missing the point because finance is simply a consequence of how good you are at marketing and operations. Okay. If if I give myself a score out of 10 for marketing, you do this to yourself. And I say my marketing is three, and I say my operations is eight, eight out of 10. In other words, I think my marketing is pretty lousy, but my operations is pretty good. Then I can pretty much guarantee that your finance score will be about a six or a seven. Finance is simply a consequence of how good you are at marketing. What is marketing? Marketing is getting customers to buy through from you and, and from operations and op what is operations? Operations is doing the doing. It's how good is, is your business at doing the doing, okay? You need to score your business. Score out of 10 for financial performance where 10 is a high score, zero is a low score. Score out of 10 for marketing where 10 is a high score, zero is a low score. And score out of 10 for operations, doing the doing, delivering the product or service to the people. Okay, this is, I mean, it's a five minute or it's a one day exercise. How good is your business is based on your finance, marketing, operations scores. But that is underpinned by your people and culture. We know the quote, you know, strategy. Uh, so culture beats strategy. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. You need to be able to score your people and culture. How good is your people and culture? Now I hear what you're saying. I can hear it saying, ah, so if my business gets a score of, I don't know, uh, we'll go back to those same. This is a typical score. Most, most agencies, when we meet them, score about three or four for marketing. In other words, we don't really know quite why our website's like everyone else. We could be better. But most of them score themselves an eight or a nine for operations. My God, we're good at what we do. There's nothing we don't know about what we do. We are so good at what we do. And so they end up getting, on average, a score of about six for finance. And they think, I know what we need to do to sort this out. The one thing we need to do, because Robert Craven says that finance is a consequence of marketing and operations. So what we need to do is we need to increase our marketing go and get the marketing consultant quick 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 we need to sell more stuff and that is really really wrong and this is the reason there's no point selling more stuff if you're not making any money you just become a busy fool if you're only making 10 cents in the dollar and you double your sales you're still hugely inefficient so what you've got to do first is you've got to sort your finance function. You've got to sort out your finance model so that when you sell for a dollar, you make 25 or 30 cents. So my recommendation to just about every agency I go into, the quick and dirty solution is not more sales and marketing. The quick and dirty solution is put up your prices. Put up your prices. Put up your prices by 10%. You've got a gross margin of 25%. You can afford to lose. You can afford to lose 25% of your customers and you've still got the same amount of money in your back pocket. I'll repeat that. If you put your prices up by 10%, you can afford to lose 25% of your customers. You have the same amount of money. And the customers you lose are the pond life and scum, the hassle makers, the difficulty, the ones who drive you mad. Put your prices down, please listen to this. I don't care where you are. You're gonna say, we're in Cairo, where it's different. Or you're gonna say, we're in Newcastle, it's different. Or you're gonna say, we're in Missouri, it's different. It's always different where you are, but it's not. If you put your prices down to become more competitive, you put your prices down by 10%, 25, uh, 30, 30% gross margin. You need to sell 50% more stuff. You need to sell five zero percent more stuff. You need to sell half as much stuff again just to stay in the same place in terms of money in your back pocket. You were working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You now need to work another two and a half days in the week to stay in the same place. The message you send out is really bad to people because you're competing on price. Uh, if you put your prices up, it's a clear message to marketplace. It's a clear message to people that you're proud of your price. You lose the pond life and scum. You filter out the people who can't afford to play at work with you. And you keep the people who recognize that. We, I can go on forever on price. If you can put up your prices, if you can't put up your prices, decrease your di direct costs. I still says if you want to look intelligent, tell people that profit is the difference between what you pay for it and what you sell it for. 
that's all you're doing. All we're trying to do is open up that profit. And when you've tried to decrease your direct costs, fix your underperformers, you have underperforming staff, try and fix them. If you can't fix them, sack them. My opinion, no one else's. You have underperforming product, try and fix it. You can't fix it, get rid of it. You have underperforming systems, try and fix them. You can't fix them, sack them. You have under, just go through sorting out. When you've done this, you've sorted out your financial model. Only then do I want you to put up, not put your money into marketing, only then. So quick and dirty model, okay. Right. So how do these people do this? How do these clever people do this? One, they measure out how good is our agency. Second, okay, so here we go, here's a standard score. Second, they do pretty much business school 101 evaluation uh, business plan. You can call this whatever you want. I don't really care what they are. What do we want to be, purpose? We want to be uh, seen as in the top three agencies in our state, the best PPC agency in our county. We want to be the most profitable agency in, in our country. We want to be known as the number one PR agency working with you know, that, that sense of what is it we want to be? Why do we get out of bed? No numbers. Then the vision. We want to be seen as. So the purpose is we get out of bed because we're trying to change how people see PR agencies or PPC agencies or full service agencies. The vision is we want to be, we want to be the number one in the top three. If you, if you get the vision, you get the purpose. And then the mission, which I'm calling the numbers, you call it what you want. So we want 10 people, 1 million turnover, £100,000 per person, 25% EBITDA, whatever those numbers are, click, 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 click. If you hit those numbers, you hit the vision, hit the vision, you hit the mission, you got the idea. And then the strategy is how we're going to do it by being faster, smarter, brighter, friendlier, ruder, uh, by gaining pure leadership in the, in, in the marketplace, by being a Google Premier partner. If you hit the strategy, you hit the mission, hit the mission, the vision, the vision, the patient. And then the milestones are the steps on the way. And then the KPIs, the devil spawn for many people, is actually the secret. So I'll tell you how we use the KPIs to actually make this happen. So we have, this is why we exist. This is what we want to be. This is how we know we've got there. The numbers are, this is how we're going to do it. The milestones are the steps on the way. And this is what we're going to measure. We'll come back to KPIs in a minute. And what you do with this is a one pager. It's only four lines for each. This, this is, you can do this in a day. And how good is your agency? What do you want to be? Step three, grab a roll of wallpaper, roll it out on the boardroom table or on a wall, get some post-its and, and map that wallpaper with where we are now, numbers, turnover, profit, cash, number of staff, number of clients, average value of clients. Map it out now, year one, year two, year three. Here we go. Here's some people doing it. And then you have this wallpaper. You work together to try and figure out what the success of the failure would look like. And, 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 and the, you know, the finance guy goes, okay, we need 23% EBITDA. And then you say, but the price for charging is $150. And he says, well, it's, your price is going to have to be $170. So it's kind of very, very... And then the uh, marketing person will say, well, then we need a new website. That's going to cost us $10,000. So everything gets moved around and you end up, this is a neat version, uh, but you end up mapping out for, you know, for each year and then each quarter what needs to be done and who needs to do it and how to do it. It's an awesome exercise, whether you're a two-person agency or a 200 person agency this exercise gets people engaged and involved and then you write that up and that becomes the business plan that is the wallpaper so going back to this we now need to measure our on a monthly basis we need to measure how we're doing you remember these four boxes we had back here we put them back again and the dashboard is all those kpis all those things you measured you know the number of toilet rolls number of proposals the wage bill, the, the da, 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 all the things you're measuring, number of sales, profitability, cash in bank. What you do is you get four boxes on a piece of paper, finance, marketing, operations, people and culture. You choose four measures for finance, four measures for marketing, four measures for operations. 
and four measures for people and culture. That's it. And you run your entire agency using this 16, 16 factor dashboard. You can use KPIs, which are uh, performance indicators, in other words, sales turnover, or predict them, predict, predictive indicators, things like um, number of meetings held, number of two hour meetings held, and so on and so forth. This is the dashboard. It's like the dashboard in an airplane, which says how high are you, how much fuel, and how fast are you going? It's the key measures, 80 20 what's going on. My point is this really simple. All the great agencies run through an exercise which is pretty much this game changer exercise. It is a bit boring and a bit dull, but they actually drive through to sort out what they're going to do, who's going to do it, how they're going to do it, when they're going to make it happen. And here's an example of a dashboard. Here's another example of a large dashboard as they're working through creating a, a more precise dashboard. And here's a 70 person agency I work with dashboard, net profit versus plan, cash, outstanding debtors, amount of money in the chest. They drive the entire business by once a month, mapping out traffic lights, their performance, and then they are able to see exactly what their performance is and what they need to do month by month. So that's the game changer. Really, really simple. It takes you maybe between a day and two days to put it together. That becomes a series of one page plans for your agency. So what the full toolkit would look like is Let's define our trajectory. How much growth are we going to go for? Let's map out what the big goals are that we're going for. Let's figure out how, how we're going to score this and what things we're going to score to make it happen. Then you drill down uh, a, a one-page finance plan, a one-page marketing plan, a one-page operations plan, a one-page one people plan. Drill down. And then it's all about execution and documenting creating processes and systems that are repeatable. Easy for me to talk about, incredibly difficult to, to, uh, to deliver on, to, to uh, consistently um, make happen, but this is what they do. This is my point. So let me just go back now to answering those original questions. Why can't we get more better people? This is the toughest question we have right now. Okay, normally, Pre-2022, I'd say, have a great culture, be a family, talk about the benefits, talk about the benefits of being small, talk about the benefits of being friendly, talk about the benefits of, of personal growth and being connected with the industry. That's gone out of the window in the last three months entirely. The big players have all walked in to independent agencies saying to people, what are you earning? You can earn double that and you have a, sh and you have a share of the shares. It is, it is like war out there. It is, it is not friendly. It's not nice. Not only are your people got their head up and they're aware that there's the opportunity to go elsewhere, but the prices that are being offered, the fees that are being offered are so huge elsewhere that they find it difficult not to leave. I'm afraid that if you want good people now, it's not good enough to say, we've got a nice culture, we get on okay. You're almost certainly going to have to pay for it because that has become what it is. It's like war out there. It's no longer uh, people work at nice places to have a nice lifestyle. The staff are, are hungry and they, they can kind of smell blood. So we're getting these stories of, of, of you know, junior developers asking ridiculous hundred hundred and twenty dollars hundred twenty thousand dollars we have stories of interns interviewing agencies saying thank you very much um i've got two other agencies to interview i'll let you know whether i want to work with you it is absolutely bonkers out there it is upside down so i'm afraid you've got to do all the good stuff about great culture and so on and so forth you've got to try and lock people in and give them handcuffs if you can so that's about sort of if you stay here for three years you'll get a big bonus you'll get a bonus when we sell and so on and so forth but, but when push comes to shove it only seems to be money that's, that's speaking and, I, and, and that's because of where we are at the moment why aren't we more profitable simple answer is you don't charge enough why aren't we more profitable 
simple answer probably number two is you don't know what your um your billability is and you don't know what your utilization is in other words if someone's meant to work for you for 35 hours maybe they spend five hours not not working that leaves 30 hours billable uh, how many of those hours do they actually bill most people don't actually know the answers to those questions they think they do but when you actually scratch around those numbers they're a bit vague but you need to understand for all the hours you sold last year last month and for the billings that you put out last month you know what is the average price and and what we're discovering in more and more agencies is that when they actually look at look at the the cost of delivering one hour of of agency work, it's coming in at 100, 110, $120 an hour to deliver when all the costs of the agency divided by the number of hours it sells. You look at the actual cost of delivering an hour of service, it might, it'll, it'll stagger you what it's going to be. And that's why you need to push for being profitable. Uh, why can't you get more better customers? Normally, that's because you haven't articulated what you do, who you do it for, uh, and why you do it. You know, marketing 101 is about segmentation. You know, in other words, chopping up the marketplace into specific types of people who have specific needs and differentiation, making yourself different from the rest. Most agencies are so unbelievably similar. It is, it is mind numbing. Everyone. It, when I ask you why you can't sell more stuff, which is really the elephant in the room, yeah, uh, it's because it's it, from the punter's view, it all looks the same. You look all identical. Everything is just a little bit shiny, you know, uh, it's all cluttered and commoditized. There's too much competition. And now we've got incredible consumer consciousness. We say we're different. Everyone's way, everyone's blinking website says oh we're different and your view of the world is totally blinkered and distorted you're not different look i'm starting to look a bit more closely you're all the same you all say the same things we're a trusted advisor we're creative thinkers we're passionate about what we do you know it's it's actually digital agency website buzzword bingo you all say the same things. Yeah, just look at this list. We're all about results. We're strategic. We work with you and your objectives. We deliver value. We have technical excellence. We're platform agnostic. It's um, it's like you can make any agency website by picking any five of these things. We employ the best people. Yeah, we're not yes men. We challenge you. You know, it is banal, and it's really more important. It's really difficult for for the punter to know what they should be buying from. So when they ask that question, I'm going to phone up every single one of you tonight. Why should I buy from you from when I can buy from the competition? You need to be come up, being able to come up with a succinct answer to that question and not one of this lot. So I'll calm down. The top questions which have the word we. The next question is, should we merge buy sell? In an ideal world, in either of those instances, that's a two, should be a, at least a two year lead into actually doing that. But everyone now is buying and selling furiously. Actually, there's a really strong argument that says that, 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 that buying to grow may work if you can buy a really good workforce, or it may work if you can buy a really good um, book of clients, or it may work if you can buy a really good IP. Um, but it's a lot of work. Do the numbers. How much could you grow in three years independently versus how much could you grow if you if you actually bought another agency? And likewise, you know, I can understand why people want to sell. They want to get out because it's got a bit tough. But if you're finding it tough, what makes you think another person would find you attractive? However, those that's the top four we questions. And then the top four I questions, why am I working harder? You're working harder because you don't have enough focus. You're working harder because you don't apply the 80-20 principle enough. You're working harder because you work too many days. I know that sounds really obvious. Just go to a four day week now. You'll find it's amazing how much more work you can get done. And on day five, when you're swimming or running or painting, your brain will be working on the business. You never had a good idea in front of a laptop. So the less time you work on a laptop, the better it is. As the leader of an agency, 
your job is not to work in the business. You pay people $50 an hour to do that, $30 an hour. Your job as a leader of an agency is to, is to problem solve and to make it easier for your team to do stuff. That your job is to, is to be challenged by the problems around you and, and come up with solutions for it. Your job, you know, is just look at your diary. You know, you are your diary, as Tom Peters has, and figure out how much $10 an hour work you do, how much $100 an hour work you do, and how much $1,000 an hour work you do. You should be doing $1,000 an hour work. All the $10 an hour work, give it to someone you paid $10 an hour for. Likewise, $100 an hour. So while you're working hard, it's probably because there's just not enough focus and you've not got on top of the systems and processes. Should I hand over control? That's a great question. If you really are incompetent at your job, or you feel you are, then you probably should. But as an agency owner, leader, founder, you have a unique motivation and a unique understanding of what's going on in the business. An employee will, not, will rarely have that that level of understanding so maybe you should hand over control of part of the business maybe you hate doing the marketing go and get a marketing director or maybe you hate doing the coding go and get the co go coding director head of code but but it's your business you need to kind of grow some and, and start running the business you want to run and that goes back into the how do i get my mojo back so many agency owners have just lost that enthusiasm, that spark, and that energy about running an agency. You get your mojo back by getting your focus back. You get your focus back by remembering why the heck you're doing it. And you get your mojo back by actually getting more focus and probably working less so that you enjoy the work, so that your whole identity isn't wrapped up with being at work, so that you actually are quite fit and energetic and healthy, so you sleep well, so you've got interesting other stuff going on, so you can go back into the agency kind of replenished. And what's the secret source you're missing? You know, Facebook tells us there's a secret source. Follow these five steps, this magic. Uh, someone will be telling you, this is how I grew my agency 10 years ago, follow what I did 10 years ago in an entirely different world and it'll work. You know, just think about it, it's nonsense. How, 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 how could that be? So I wanna go back to the bell curve, okay? Most of us are stuck in the bell curve, doing similar things to other people, following, looking to the left, looking to the right, and doing extremely average results. And my argument is not that top quarter percent, but the top 10 percent, you know, you can move your way across by following what they do. What is it they do? They charge more. They have better clients, they have better marketing departments. They 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 have focus. They have clarity, you know, and and and, and they have been helped to actually do that. And my argument is that you you can do the same. The the, the rule is there. The guidebook is there. This is a lot about mindset and it's a lot about having some form of support or assistance to actually make you do that. So what's going on right now? What's going to happen right now? Look, talking strategy is great fun. Talking about how you grow your business and what you do next is great fun. My job is awesome in that sense, okay? But strategy is a commodity, yeah? Lots of people do it. It's, it, it there are strategy workshops happening everywhere all the time. Execution is the art nailing it by doing execution is the art and general barrow you know amateurs talk about strategy professionals talk about logistics this is about you going out there not just dreaming about it but actually delivering on it so yes billables are a nightmare at the moment big question will the market pay recruitment is a nightmare right now remote working can you have you got it right m a is everywhere these are the things which are driving everyone mad but in a nutshell, you need to have a marketing and sales machine, one page document. You need to have an operations machine, one page document. And then, and then everything else you do is about execution and doing it. You need to talk to people, pick up the phone. You need to uh, make sure your people are online. Go and check out they're doing it. It is about execution. It's about getting out there and doing it. Look, the book I wrote, Grow Your Digital Agency, I actually, I apologize, I actually got the book title wrong, okay? It shouldn't be called Grow Your Digital Agency, it's the wrong title. It should be called In Praise of the Dull, 
boring stuff because what it is that really great agencies do is they have their systems and their processes, their game changer they have their schedule of meetings they have fourth day after the month then they have the finance meeting the marketing meeting operation eight days after the month then they have the board meeting once a quarter they have the quarterly board meeting once a year they have their strategic away day they have on a, every monday they have their stand-ups they have a process and system for doing everything from answering the phone to onboarding and they and it's a mechanized system which actually works and and everyone knows how to do it and it's not dependent on people because it's it's the system that actually matters so if so the managing director the chief that can go on holiday for a month and nobody notices because the business still runs because it's a system and it's a model so is it hard to grow an agency if we know what to do then why can't why don't we do it of course it's hard to grow an agency i'm under no illusions and the agencies that i work with i can see i can feel we know how hard it is but also no it's not it's actually about how we how we put it together how we make it happen uh it's about mindset the right frame of mind the right attitude the right clarity the right determination the right sense of focus and purpose about what we're doing and even more so it's about discipline making tough decisions deciding who and what and how and when and and you know we need to find the device or the devices of the people to help us with that mindset and to help us with that discipline so my message to you is really really simple <laughs> my message to you is stop peeing around um, and if you want to grow your business and you want to do it that's absolutely fine and if you don't want to and you want to shuffle along that's absolutely fine as well but if you want to shuffle along shuffle along and enjoy it and don't feel guilty about it and if you want to grow your business then grow your business and enjoy it and on that note i'm going to say thank you so much for listening uh, thank you so much uh, for being there. Uh, and let's throw it over to q and I'd like loads of Q&A. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Robert. That was really awesome. And I think this is the new version of the presentation because I saw kind of a much earlier one a couple of years ago. Um, really awesome, awesome insights. As we're giving people time to put in their questions in the chat, Talk to us about uh, the GIDA initiative, uh, Grow Your Digital Agency initiative. Um, I know it's, it's in Europe. I, I'm working really hard to get you to do something in, in the US, uh, but why don't you give us some, uh, some uh, information about it? Okay, really, really simple. So we do, we do one thing, which is we help agency owners and founders run the agency they want to run so they can live the lives they want to lead. So if you want to swim across the Atlantic, we can set up the agency that'll allow you to do that. And if you want to grow the agency and sell it for $10 million, we can help you do that. And we've done pretty much both, but maybe not quite. So maybe the swimming across the Atlantic wasn't quite true, but he did row across the Atlantic. And you know, how the heck do we do that? We do that three ways, one-to-one -one work, lots of coaching and consulting. We have uh, one to few, which is the mastermind groups, which you've referred to, Khalid, and we'd love to start doing that, that in the States. That's an online group of eight, 10 people meet up once, twice a month. The board you could never afford is kind of the quote, but it's about, it's about really getting feedback. And what that does is it nudges you to make the decisions you wouldn't make. And then we do coach it. We do, then we do training and online stuff, but it's all about, uh, this is not prescriptive. This is not, that the five step way to is about, okay, this is how you can, let's figure out what your challenges are and let's push you to make those tough decisions in one way or the other. And as I said, I'm not, I'm not judgmental. If you want, if you want to lean back and take $70,000 a year from your agency, that's cool. But lots of people are just frustrated that they could be doing twice that, three times that, four times that, and they haven't figured out quite how. I love that. I love that. And uh, I, I did answer this question in the chat. Yes, the recording will be available. If people want to get a copy of the presentation, 
uh, Robert, you hang out on LinkedIn every now and then, not consistently, more on Facebook, as far as I can tell. Oh, I kind of, I kind of do both, but I'll, I'll put, uh, I'll put my, my um, email address here in the chat, so at least you can get that initiative dot com. That's the. Um, has that gone out to the whole world? Or let me put that out to the whole world. Uh, no, it just uh, went out to me. <laughs> yeah. So what we do? So so yeah, you you talked about the mastermind group. And the mastermind groups are are great. I'm a member of a mastermind group myself. You know, I smoke my own tobacco. Um, and 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 the thing about it is, you think you know what you're going to do, and then you have eight. You tell people what you're going to do, and then eight people just challenge you and cross question you and say, I've done that and it didn't work for me, or I've seen you do this before, but that didn't work. So it's, it's, it's really, uh, yeah, the idea of hive mind, other people have been there and done it, helping you go there and do it. It's also um, an opportunity to hear yourself think. And most of all, it's a safe harbor. It's the other people in the same place as you, Everyone feels maybe their partner doesn't necessarily listen to them anymore, but these are people who actually care. So we create these little clubs, these little communities of agency owners. Um, and the, the, the impact has been awesome. And we, the results are off the scale. That may be a bit of a self-selection thing, uh, but, but they're off the scale in terms of how they do it. And yes, and yes, Philly, let's, let's do one in the States. Yes. I mean, I'll, I'll just, and I think we we're about to start the next session, but I'll just mention an actual example of, of this. I came to the last session that we've had. That was last week. And in my mind, so Robert sends us a questionnaire that we have to fill out, say, what do you want to discuss? What are the, what's on top of your mind? And I came in saying, I'd like to hire a COO. Uh, I think that's what we need to do to grow uh, our agency to the next level. After a discussion with the other agency owners, I came out and I'm like, okay, I don't need to hire a CEO. I need to rethink through this. And I went in a completely different direction, still kind of building towards that, but it was very insightful. And I'm actually in the process of kind of following different steps. So that that's really where, where this is helpful. Where I'm like, okay, yeah, here's a better way. Um, people who have tried it didn't succeed. People are taking a different approach, building slowly towards it. So it's, it's just really interesting kind of, Instead of making the mistakes, learning from other people and what they've done, um, I know one of the one of the speakers, not to mention who who's with us today. I was talking to him also a couple of weeks ago, and he said, you know, he's like, "Oh, I hired a CEO last year, and it was the biggest mistake I've done." And I'm like, "Oh God, you know, I saved myself a few thousand dollars." <laughs> so, uh, Robert, awesome, really appreciate. It. I don't see any questions, um, but you can tell, like, you know, everybody enjoyed it. This was a ton of value. Uh, Robin just dropped his email. Do check out the Get a Member Hub. Uh, the, there's the online resource, the Mastermind. If you, yes, you know, uh, once every two months is so so helpful. Um, so I highly I highly recommend that. Robert, thank you for taking the time. I know it's almost the end of the day in the UK, so you probably yeah. need to like you know take take a break. We appreciate you jumping. Everyone, we are going to continue. We'll, we're going to have Kevin Rowe join us. He is going to talk about how to use webinars to generate business. And the guy have signed up Fortune 100 companies using webinars. So unique, different approach. So um, we'll have a seven minute break and then start. Robert, again, thank you. Thank you and look forward to hearing from people. Thank you.